Good evening. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I was just checking. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. I want to go wise me. Testing. Hear me? Yes. Uh, hold on. Oof. Oh, I see Fred's there. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. You can wave if you hear me. Hey. Okay. Hey. Now I gotta. Uh. -uh. All right. Good evening, one and all. Hello. There you go. Good evening. So where did he get switched to? Right here. Uh, Love it. All these beautiful people. Fantastic. That's William Woods. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. <coughs> okay. Carol, good. Good evening, everybody. We had a, uh, um, I know um, we had our little uh, technical difficulties there. <clears throat> so it's 628. Other people will uh, um, come in. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. It's a full evening and I know you've got other stuff to do, but welcome, welcome, welcome to the first formal meeting of the Franklin Park Civic Association for 2021. And uh, for those of you who do not know, I'm Julia Lynn Walker, the president of the association. And we have with us other members of the trustees and officers and people will introduce themselves as we go along. Okay. Um, I wanted to, uh, we normally start with the minutes. Um, I don't, the, the, our minutes are posted on the website. They're distributed uh, electronically. Um, but I know that there are some new people online. Are, are there people online who did not receive the minutes who would like to receive them? And um, you know, there's a little thing uh, at the bottom where it says reactions and you can um, uh, open it and you can put your hand up or you can put a thumbs up or a thumbs down or raise hand if you have a question. And so that's how we'll kind of- Their use of force is different. Exactly. I'm sorry, I heard a question from somebody. Well, did you hear about this at a Cleveland and um, Ginther or on a show? Okay, is, does someone have their mic on and they're talking to someone else? Uh, Andy, uh, okay, who has the, uh, who signed in as Sheila? Over charges against those people. Who who signed in as Sheila, please? Because I believe your mic is on, and you've got another conversation going. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, all right. Are there people on the line who would who did not see the minutes and would like to see the minutes of the last meeting, which would have been December, as we had the mingle in January? Otherwise. Um, um. Okay. I would ask for people to approve the minutes, but given that there's so many new people on, it may be more appropriate to um Brian. Brian on? Yes, I just got on. It took me forever to get on. I know, and you were gonna be the host. Um, do you want to read the minutes, please? Out loud. 
Well, as, that's what I thought, but if that's an onerous burden for the secretary, uh, we can hold it till, let's hold it. Yes. And let's move to Tammy because she may have another appointment and we are moving right yeah. along. And we're we'll think about that and we'll come back to you, okay? So we're gonna postpone the minute, the reading of the minutes or the discussion <clears throat> of the minutes and um, move to our speaker of the evening. And we do, uh, for those of you for whom this may be your first meeting or your first meeting in a long time, uh, for the past year, we have tried to have a speaker at each meeting to uh, highlight either an institution or a concern uh, within the community. So tonight, uh, we have Tammy Forrest, who's executive director of the Central Community House, an institution that's been in our community for over 25 years at least. For 80 years. 80 years. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I knew it had been something, 80 years. Okay. So um, I thought it important for us to know about Central Community House as an institution that has um, really done so much not only for the Franklin Park Civic Association area, but actually throughout the, the, the community and the city as a whole. And so uh, within 15 minutes, we don't, you know, there's no way Tammy can talk about everything, but she can alert you to some of the highlights. And then if there are one or two questions, you know, we'll take them now. And I'm sure if you want to follow up with her later or with a more appropriate staff person with some specific services, then that would be possible as well. So Tammy, I'll turn it over to you. Sure, and I have plenty of time, no worries. I'm here um, and this is where I wanna be. So thank you for inviting me, I appreciate it. Um, I do have a three-year-old, she might join me, but um, you know, we'll just let her sit there if that happens. Um, so thanks for having me here today. I have um, been with Central Community House in, in June or the end of June, it'll be three years. Um, some days it feels like 20 years and some days it feels like day one, especially with a, a COVID pandemic. Um, we do a lot of work in the community. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, we're one of five settlement houses in the Columbus area. Um, so Central Community House, Godman Guild, Gladden, St. Stephen's, and Clintonville CRC are the five um, settlement houses in the area. We do place-based work and we're all in different neighborhoods, but we also do a lot of work together. And we also all have our niches that kind of serve the whole Columbus area as well. Um, the settlement house movement um, really was born during the world, world wars um, out of Europe and came to some of the larger cities first and then really um, every city in the United States um, became a part of this movement. Initially it became a really um, great support network for immigrants and they were workhouses. So the term settlement house was um, because it was a house where people lived. And also um, the social work movement was born out of the settlement house movement. And the field of social work came out of that um, support network that lived, uh, those individuals that lived in those homes and provided that wraparound support, that comprehensive support um, that individuals needed to be successful. And it was a very successful model um, and adapted over the years um, to really become support in those central city neighborhoods across the United States. Hull House is an example of one that's famous. Um, so Chicago and New York, you're gonna see some of those really important roots. Um, and the idea is that, that we, we react to what the neighborhood sees as a need. Once, sorry. Um, so we react to the unique needs that are in that community um, and respond to the individuals that live there, um, but at the same time, really try to provide that comprehensive support. So we do a lot, um, and that's why it's hard to talk in 15 minutes, but we also don't do it alone. We have hundreds of partners, and we, we do work across, I would say, five or six different areas, depending how you define it. Um, we're known for our youth programming, and that entails our after school and our summer camp programming, Right now, um, we've adjusted and having a learning enrichment center on site where youth are doing their, um, their virtual learning from our site. And we do have open seats. So if you know families that would like to take advantage, I think we have a couple um, of having their kids elementary age in the learning enrichment center, we'd love to, to welcome them. 
Um, traditionally, it's an after school program. Um, we typically serve 40 kids in, in the summer, 40 kids during the year, our summer camps all day. Our after school programs after school, we offer healthy meals. Our focus is um, getting kids to a place where they're gonna graduate from high school and social emotional learning. Um, and that just the right now, what's the most important thing is having an opportunity to interact with other kids and have fun outside of school. So we're really trying to offer um, creative activities um, that are fun and therapeutic all at once. Um, the transit arts program is another aspect of our youth, pro youth programming. Um, serves middle school and high school youth, though they have really championed um, virtual learning for us during periods where we needed that and have been working with um, elementary aged youth as well. We had Inventors Club over the summer where we delivered supplies um, to all the houses of the kids that were participating and then did virtual activities. Um, we're doing less and less virtual activities now because the kids have had enough of it. Um, and we're looking forward to bringing kids back on site um, hopefully, we're really hoping April or May. Um, and that's going to be connected to the COVID pandemic and where we are with that. But also, um, to be frank, we're doing a million dollar investment in our Main Street building right now. So we've got a lot of construction people there. So we're also going to time it based on when those renovations are complete. Um, we've got two locations. We've got our Main Street facility, and then we've got um, our Bryden facility. We call that the English um, Community Center. And that is where Transit Arts sits in the carriage house back there. And we've moved our senior program. You may notice our, our seniors are all at our Bryden location now. We did that because that program has grown exponentially um, and we needed more space and we wanted to keep folks safe right now and, and isolated from where the kids are. So our Transit Arts program was born out of the hip hop movement, visual arts, dance, poetry, spoken word. If, if a youth wants to do it, we will make it happen. And it's I mean, I'm biased, but it's state of the art. I think it's the best arts program in the city. Um, one of the first things I did when I came and I, is, is brought some of the leaders from, from communities that surround us trying to build relationships and let them know who we are and what we're doing. Brought the mayor Dexley over, introduced him and his daughter now attends transit arts program. We also get kids from Upper Arlington. So I love it because um, it's really that, to me, that perfect example of bringing together um, people from all different backgrounds, all different and coming together and, and growing and learning um, and becoming a community. And I think they've really figured that out, um, focusing on assets and what people want to do and what they're good at and not reacting to what the challenges and needs are in the community. Um, so moving on from that, the senior program has really, really grown since I started. Um, it was initially one staff with social primarily social programming. And since I started, it's grown from one staff person to three staff and two VISTAs. And so, and our support now um, is a little bit more diversified. So we were, we were doing just social programming and, and some transportation and outreach. And now we have a full-time, we have an open position right now to hire um, a housing and health navigator, which um, support seniors within those areas, but really any type of navigation of resources that are needed. Um, so if you know someone over the age of 60 that really needs anything in the neighborhood, they should come to us, whether it's fun, um, social activities, whether they're needing resources. We do have a pool of funds that we have that we can use. Um, and it's, it's kind of cool because it's not just like rental assistance, utility assistance. We can buy running shoes for people if they want to start, you know, walking shoes, start walking or running. We can buy art supplies. We can buy books to be in book clubs. So we've created this sunshine fund, which is to bring really just joy into the life um, of the seniors in our neighborhood during this really challenging time. And to be frank, one of the reasons we rebranded it that way, um, understandably, is our seniors are very proud. Um, they, they don't want crisis and basic needs support. They want to hang out and have fun. And we know that. And so we, we, we turned it from from you know, essential like crisis bags, I think we were calling it. And we turned it into a sunshine fund and we said, hey, what do you wanna do? What's fun? And then when we drop things off, we do stoop visits and we see, do they need a home repair as well? Is there, does it look like there's some other challenge or maybe they'll talk to us about health challenges or something. And we try it, to use that um, as a gateway into providing all of that other support if they need it as well. Um, we also have availability to provide, um, it's a lot of the residential 
facilities um, around the South Side and Near East where we pick seniors up in the morning hours and we get them to the grocery stores. So they can do their grocery shopping. Um, we tried to do online and we tried to set up Kroger accounts, but no, nope, people want to buy their own groceries and they want to pick them out. So that's been a really important service during this time and we get it. Um, we do a lot of deliveries. And so we're able to deliver things to homes and we're able to transport. We also can provide lift service to seniors for free. We have limited services to go to doctor's appointments and things like that. Um, if you ever need something for a senior, don't be afraid to ask because we've got a lot going on right now. Um, so social case management, um, outreach and engagement, transportation, and education. We do, we have two programs, um, two pilot projects. One is a technology project. Um, we've purchased Chromebooks for 40 seniors and provided 18 hotspots and created a virtual program that actually is moving, it's, it's actually hitting um, a lot of folks more than we anticipated, not enough because we serve you know, 200 to 300 seniors a year, um, but to get 40 regularly interacting through book clubs and crafts, it's been wonderful. We actually hope to keep doing that um, on top of the, the um, on-site services, even when um, we transition back because it's just been valuable and it's another way to interact. And we hope to get at least another 20 Chromebooks out over the next year to add folks into that program. And we contract with an amazing group of Venti who teaches um, basics of computer literacy and then gets into how do you use Zoom and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, moving on to entrepreneurship programming. This also is a new program since I've been at Central. It's called the Academy for Community Entrepreneurs. Um, and it is a place for ideation and early stage businesses. Um, before this position, I worked at ECDI for five years and that's an organization that helps businesses get up and running. And one of the things I learned there is ECDI is not accessible to everyone and not everybody's ready for it. And so to me, this was an important stepping stone for businesses to get there. They're our partner for access to capital when people need investment and OSU Extension works with us too. But we provide a full, a full curriculum where individuals are leaving with a business plan and the focus is job creation um, and increasing revenue and getting businesses up and running. And we try to use those businesses when we need to buy things for, for, our, for our business as well. Um, that originally also was, was meant to be a place where artists who kind of graduated out of the transit arts program could take their trade to the next level. And so we do have a cohort that just are those transit arts graduates trying to figure out what can I do? What can I do next? What's going to make sense for me? And some people just gain skill sets, whether it's financial projections to help them in life or to help them in their own business, or they become successful business owners. We get a little bit of everything. Um, it's also enabled us to have some more financial literacy classes, which are accessible to anyone who wants them, budgeting and things like that. Um, our next area we call um, family strengthening or family stabilization services. And those are the services where families typically come in in crisis. Um, and our goal as a settlement house, unfortunately, it, it, a little bit of a failed goal this year, to be frank. Um, but our goal is to have two tiers of services. You come in in crisis, we, we get through the crisis, and then you become family. And we do ongoing support. And that ongoing support can be, you know, participating in bingo night. It can be participating in fun things. And it also could be getting into a parenting class, which has been a really important service that this year in particular with the stress around COVID. Um, and we hope, you know, coming to eat dinner with us monthly, celebrating the holidays with us, getting your kids enrolled in our programming. The goal is to serve the whole family. If we're doing our job, we're working with mom, her mom, her kids, grandkids, and we're interacting with them um, because that's how you really make impact. And that's how you really create strong relationships and consistency. Um, so we've got case management services, we, the end of last year, I mean, in a two month period, we got out um, almost $200,000 in rental and utility assistance in a two month period, and it wasn't enough. And so we're advocating now um, to city um, council, all of the settlement houses to get a lot more money. Impact does that as well, but we think it's really important for the settlement houses to have their own um, pool because again, those long-term relationships are important um, and the type of engagement is different. And so we hope that that will happen. Um, 
trying to think what else there. So anyone's eligible for those family strengthening services. And then finally, the community services. And that's really anything that's open to public, anyone of any age. Um, that would be our children's parade that we do once a year. That would be um, our Christmas programming, our Halloween programming, um, our monthly meals. Um, I know I'm missing I'm back to school bash where we provide school supplies to kids before they go to school. Um, so that kind of explains those areas where we do work. It, it certainly is more than that, but I think that gives you a taste. And I'd rather stop now and answer questions and have time for questions than talky, 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 if that's okay. <laughs> so are there any questions from anyone? Yeah, I have a question about these financial literacy classes. Mm -hmm. Are they for anyone in general, the community or like people who are interested in starting like their own business or their own side hustle? They're for anyone. I will tell you that the two cohorts that participate the most are those who are accessing resources like rental assistance or something like that. Um, and, and we want to do budgeting with them and have a plan um, before we invest in them. And, and, and we typically almost always invest in them, particularly right now, but we think it's important to know where things are going. Now, the financial literacy classes that are part of our entrepreneurship program, anyone can go to those. And I would suggest anyone who's interested in better understanding how to um, budget, save, plan for the future, that class is amazing. Susan Colbert of OSU Extension and her staff teach that class, and I don't think there's anyone better. Um, so anyone can attend those courses, and you'll see we have flyers that say um, business finance, and then under it, this is for anyone too. Don't let the name scare you away. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, how often does the entrepreneurship group meet, or well, when do they meet? Gosh, that program is one that um, hasn't died down with, with virtual learning. We're serving hundreds a year. It's ongoing. You can enter any time during the year. The challenge is, so it, it's, um, it's tiered. You go through stages. You start in, you go into an orientation where you learn about the class. Mm -hmm. Then you go into um, something, you, you take an entrepreneur assessment. And this teaches you what kind of entrepreneur you are. So you might know you want to work with food, but you don't know if you want to cook it or sell it, or market it, you know, what do you want to do with food? And you figure that out. And that can help you in your career too. That assessment's amazing. Then you move on and you participate in something called business model design. And we lose people through each of these stages, but losing them isn't necessarily bad because they got what they needed out of it. So you go into business model design, and this is also great for anyone, but it's particularly artists because it's a visual plan. So you're building your model visually and moving things around as part of a cohort, as part of a class. Um, after you do your, your visual model, that is reviewed by the instructor and they talk through that. And then they decide if you're music, moving into the business planning piece. That's the part that not everybody can do because each cohort probably can only take up to 15. But I'll also say they haven't been filled. We've usually had eight to 10. And okay. so it's a process to get through all of it and I can't remember, we still have, I mean, we, we have two cohorts this year. One is, one of the cohorts has started now and those first three classes, you probably could take all of them. And then there's gonna be two business planning cohorts this year still. I hope I explained that well. <laughs> are the classes in person or are they online? Uh, they on have historically Zoom. been in person, now they're all online. Um, this is the one area where we found in some ways we've been more successful with virtual in part because of the childcare and transportation variable bar barriers and the flexibility. We will end up having them on, on site again, but it's not our first priority of programming to bring back on site. So are you, are you offering any classes on Saturday, uh, any, any of the programs? Um, we offer, I think some, you know, I think some of the A stuff is on the weekends. And I, and I believe we do stuff in the evenings. We have, um, like socialization programming, just fun stuff that we do on the weekends too. But I will say that a majority of our programming is during the week, during the day and during the evening hours. Now, if we see there is a great need for Saturdays, we um, tested Saturday programs for a little while and they weren't hugely successful when we were on site. Like we were doing yoga and some exercise and it, we weren't getting a lot of folks, um, but 100% open to it if you think there's a need in a specific area that you'd like to see. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, then you know uh, um, she can put her email into the chat. Um, you know you can. Okay, wait a minute, Mick and Megan. This will be the last one. Um, you know where to find her on Main Street, uh, and then the arts are, and uh, seniors are basically on Brighton Road. But let's get this last question from Mick and Megan, and then we'll go I'll back. My cell to phone our... in there too. Don't hesitate to call me. Um, I, it's Thank important you. That's to me that I'm accessible. Okay, is that Mick or Megan or both? It's Megan. Hi, thank you, Julia. Then, um, hi, Tammy. I was just wondering, do you guys ever work with Fairwood Commons? It's so, yeah, we do. We absolutely do. And um, historically, we've done outreach activities there. It, it, I, I chuckled when you asked that because we just had a meeting about um, getting back to outreach and on site. And the first um, one of the first two locations for our seniors we're looking to get back to is Fairwood. And um, our senior program program coordinator is about to reach back out to them to see what their COVID requirements are, what their guidelines are, see that they're kind of up to par with what we're expecting, what we expect at our facility, and then also um, understanding if it's feasible. So yeah. we're looking to do that, but we certainly do transportation there now. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, we, we, we talk to a lot of our, our house like alleys with their alley. So we'll always have kind of conversations with some of the, the people that live there and, and they definitely seem like they're, you know, always looking for activities. <laughs> yep, so we'll be reaching out this week to see what we can do. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. And then Tammy, uh, oh, thank you. Would you also put your um, website into the chat? And then, yes, but um, I want to tell you we're going to have a new website um, in March. So there's okay. not, it's not as updated as I'd like it to be, and it's not as great as I'd like it to be, but there's going to be. No problem. Um, we're, we're all in transition. We're mm -hmm. all in we're all in flux. We're all learning how to pivot, all those words. Facebook okay? is good. Like us on Facebook. We put a lot out there daily. Okay. Okay, fine. Well, thank you very much. Glad you were able to attend. And I found that was very informative. Um, some of the things I thought I knew, there are more things and, you know, and I've got to go back to the new and the old website and just look more closely at some of the things that you, the programs that you have to offer. Okay. We're Anytime back our... you need me, I'm here. Any questions you have, call me, email me, um, and feel free to share my contact information with others if they're looking to reach out. Okay? Good. Thank you very much. And the, um, also, uh, uh, you know, as an organization, an individual, and as you're attached to other organizations, think about supporting uh, CCH financially. You know, uh, every donation, you know, no matter how large or small, is useful. It can be in kind. Um, there may be cash. Maybe it's a hookup with something else, a program you know about that's doing something. You know, just keep them in mind. And now that you've known some of the uh, programs, maybe there's something that you can connect that would help to make. Uh, you know, it basically strengthens them, it strengthens our community. So just Julian, there's one other thing I wanted to mention before I leave. Uh -huh. We just got a huge investment in, um, um, I can't, I'm so embarrassed. What's it called when you do a, a raised, raised beds? We are installing, wow. gosh, like wow. 10 huge raised wow. beds at Bryden. I think they're 10 feet by six feet or something. They're gonna be enormous. Um, we have lots of potential for amazing gardening we're seeking volunteers. It's going to be amazing. And I know, Julianne, that you care about right. that. You know, so that's my <laughs> heart. And you know, but also, uh, we have on our, our, our agenda tonight a discussion on the community gardens in our area. And so I know Richard, I can see him laughing. He's added you to the list. And so, yes, you somebody will be in touch with you because they'll you be installed in March. They're being built right now. We can't. Okay, wait. because we've got all <laughs> kinds of options, and 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 right now I'm coordinating volunteers. I got an email today about volunteers. So yes, all of awesome. that it's all very doable. Okay. Cool. And we're planting fruit trees. That's wonderful. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not, please, the rest of the meeting will go on garden. So we're not doing that. Pull back. I'm pulling back consciously. No more discussion. Thank you. Okay, well, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check off. Thank you, because I'll talk okay. too much. Have All a right. great we'll keep evening, that in everybody. Mind. Okay, good. So, Richard, you made a note, I know. All right. Uh, Brian, are we ready with the minutes, or shall we uh, send them to people? And we'll hold them for next week, next month. Uh, I have, I sent the minutes out to everybody yesterday, and... Mike. Okay, we have a we have a number of people on the call I know who did not who are new, who not who did not receive them. So and my computer is taking forever to open up Word. Okay, 
All right. Well, we'll hold them. So we're going to hold the minutes for next week, next month. Next um, month. Yeah, move on to the treasurer's report. Um, Nick was not able to be here, but he did submit a report that we had uh, 36 new members, or we have 36 uh, confirmed memberships. Let me put it that way, because it wasn't all new members. And I want to just move our move my you know you see me playing games here with my um, <laughs> my okay. But uh, Sandra, who also had trouble getting in, so she came to my house. You see how bad it is? You see when people want to be part of something, they do what has to be done, right? right? <laughs> so she came to my house because she couldn't get in on her uh, tool, utensil, whatever. Um, but she has paid up for three years. That's really why I was doing this. Yeah. She's, she's, she's paid up for three years. Yes. Okay? No worries. So, um, the, the, uh, uh, you can pay for this year, but you can pay for two years. You can pay for a friend, family, everybody, but it's just a sign of your commitment. It's not that much. Come on. And you're not drinking, you know, your, uh, uh Starbucks every day. So, you know, you got plenty of money to put into Franklin Park. So come on. Okay. <clears throat> but, um, we had a, an ending balance of, uh, $7,224.02 in our bank account, okay? So 36 paid members, and then the ending balance of $7,224.02 in our bank account, all right? And one of the things that we want to um, encourage people, we won't have so much discussion, but we'll look at doing for March is for instance, uh, um, uh, uh, Richard and uh, uh, Meredith and that crew, the garden crew, if they say, okay, for gardening, we need a budget of this, then we're gonna encourage different projects, you know, come back in March with a budget. Let us know what your needs are. Because the money doesn't have to sit here in the bank. The money is for the development of the community. And so with a viable budget, we just need to know in advance and be able to plan accordingly and let's put the money back into the community. Okay, so that's the trust report. In terms of community reports, I'm sorry, committee reports. Um, we've got uh, community assistance with Kim. Kim was on, Kim? Yes. Yes, do you have a report for us? On community assistance? Yes, I, I thought I was talking about- uh, 18th the, and Oak. Oh, 18th and Oak. There is absolutely no information uh, going out about it at all. Okay. It seems to be stopped at city council right now, which was one of the things that she had, that uh, the aid to, uh, does any, yeah, uh, had said that, uh, you know, they didn't know when it was gonna come up before city council. Right. And it's, it's gonna be something that, uh, you know, we just have to watch for. Okay. I do encourage everyone to contact council members on any issues. We have a lot going on with the rezoning of, uh, of uh, the changing of the zoning rules and regulations for our neighborhoods, um, which means that people won't have to go before anyone to, to you know, structurally change our blocks and, and our neighborhoods. So right. we need to keep an eye on that as well. Okay. Any questions or comments for Kim? Okay. Uh, marketing and rebranding. Hey, yeah, I can speak to that. Um, Tamika and I, uh, we're, we're making some progress on it. Um, Julia Lynn, we're going to actually schedule a meeting with you in the next few weeks because we, we sort of got to the place we wanted to be. And then Tamika had a very wonderful distraction <laughs> and so I really um, I don't know I should have announced at the beginning so go ahead yeah so Tamika uh has uh, and Mike had a, a wonderful baby boy healthy happy um so and uh we haven't met him yet for COVID reasons but we're very excited and they said that um he had a full head of hair and looks just like man so I, I, I got a picture, um, and really, he just, I was like, wow, this is newborn? Because, I mean, he was something. <laughs> yeah, they, they just hit copy and paste, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, whoa. But, yeah, okay, all right, fine. So we'll get the meeting going, and then we'll come back again in March and see where we are with uh, the marketing and branding. The traffic study. 
Jay. Yep. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty, pretty brief at this point. Um, not a ton of progress uh, since December uh, due to uh, helping out with the mingle. Um, I did have a meeting with uh, some folks in Old Town um, on some of the issues that they have been having on Ohio um, specifically um, and some of the steps that they are, are currently taking in order to alleviate some of their issues. Um, the, the last time we had spoken, um, I'm, I'm still having trouble getting a hold of, of uh, Jesus. Um, I've, I've sent him a number of emails and I'm, I'm, I'm falling on deaf ears here. So our, uh, last time we had spoken, um, you guys have told me to elevate to someone and I cannot find my notes on who that someone was, who, who Jesus's boss was. And I'm having trouble trying oh. to figure that out. Got it. I Will's got me this time. Clearly. Gotcha. Oh, you got so, it. Call it. Thank you. Yeah. Call it William Scott. Right. That's yeah, it. We, uh, I said yeah. I, I had spoken to Jesus um, about expanding the scope of the study to a few additional neighborhoods, getting in touch with um, the CPD liaison, um, as well as uh, getting in touch with a few of the other uh, neighborhood groups. Um, and, and I'm just kind of waiting on those contact info um, pieces come back from him, as well as getting me in touch with a couple of folks at the city. So once we have a plan in place, we can go present it to the city. So um, I'll reach out to, uh, to Carla here this week um, and see if I can't get some of those items uh, shaken loose. So, so March, I'll have a more robust report, hopefully. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Any questions for Jay? Okay, the uh, um, develop now, Will. Thank you. Um, I put together a uh, projected uh, development strategy for our committee. We have a couple of people who agreed to restart this effort. We've had development committees in the past and we're trying to uh, get our arms around our previous commitments and, and current opportunities. And uh, when I completed this, uh, uh, this plan, one person said, it looks like a job description. So, <laughs> 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 and because there's so much to be done and there's so much coming our way. So I, I will ask our uh, secretary to uh, put it out to everybody and to put it on our website and ask that you be in touch with either Kim, Carol, or myself with any questions. But more than questions, we are looking for volunteers for people who want to hold one of the oars and pull us forward on the uh, objectives that we have and maybe even under task, undertake a task that we've outlined. But uh, many of the things we talked about are uh, things that have been discussed in previous meetings and I think you'll find it all familiar, but we will probably have to at least initially get started by having brief development committee meetings in the interim of these others. Uh, and hopefully that will work for everyone. Okay. Good. So this is good because we have been talking about this, but we really haven't gotten it off the ground. So now there's an outline of um, objectives or goals. And it, as Will says, it's really about, oh, shoot. Okay, people coming forward who can help out. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, thank you. That was just a, that, that was just a flash. <laughs> uh, just a um, testimony here. Yeah. But please, I, I asked earlier, I want to reinforce, please put your name and address in the um, chat so that if we can, uh, um, you know, follow up and make sure that you're on the mailing list. But the best way, of course, to get on the mailing list is to pay your membership. Um, but we will, you know, send out information to everybody who's on the uh, call tonight. Okay. And then move to um, old business. We have the mingo with um, Kirsten, Miriam, and or Brian. 
So any update, anything somebody wants to say on the Mingo? What? Oh, I have those. Um, okay, sorry. So Hi, we are finalizing any, uh, sending out any prizes. I have a couple people picking up next week. Will, I have something I have to take offline with you because we ha both have half of somebody's prize and I don't want her to have to drive all over. Um, so you and I will figure that out afterwards, but everything okay, is stop. good. Stop, stop. Yes. First of all, we had an excellent party. We did. It was Thank a lot. you. I mean, you just went under. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, wait a minute. Let's acknowledge we had fun. Right? Was, uh, <laughs> we learned, how, we learned how to make a cocktail. Oh <laughs> we had some discussion. So at least acknowledge that we had fun first. OK? Now, now you can go on. I know you're such a, you see what a taskmaster she is. Now yeah. you can go on and talk about all the things you still have to do. But, but per se, we had fun and thank everybody for coming. Okay. All right. Go on, Absolutely. Kristen. Go on from there. Go on. Yeah. So, what other prizes do you have out? It was wonderful. Thank you for everyone who participated. We had lots of fun. I was, it was a very enjoyable hour with all of you guys and everyone that hopped on. And, uh, it was exactly what I needed uh, for, uh, since we can't all actually get to meet in person the way I would love having moved into this neighborhood. It was an excellent way to get to meet a ton of people okay. in the neighborhood. So right. yes, um, so yeah, outside of that, we just have a couple other things that we need to follow up on with prizing for everybody. Um, and there's only one person I can't get a hold of, Julia Lynn, I think you know might know who it is, so I'll text you on the side later. Okay. Um, but outside of that, yeah, we, we are good to go. And uh, it was an awesome time. Anybody have anything in terms of, you know, what they would like to be able to expand on next year? Obviously, hopefully it's in person, mm -hmm. et cetera. But if anybody has anything they want to bring to the table, please. Okay, well, first let's hear from Mariam. I just had a question. I remember during the mingle, um, someone asked about starting a walking group on Sundays, I believe, at Franklin yes. Park. And um, I don't think anyone followed up with that. So I wanted to get well, It was one of those meet at noon at the corner of Franklin Park West and, you know, Fair <laughs> Avenue and whoever showed up. And I think the next Sunday, there was a terrible snowstorm, if I remember correctly. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> there was some serious snow. And I wondered about the dog walkers as I burrowed beneath my covers. So yeah. I don't know, because I don't have a dog, but I did mm -hmm. wonder. But I do remember now, I want to say the next two Sundays, there was a lot of snow, but definitely mm -hmm. the next Sunday, there was some snow. So I don't know. Uh, and it could be something that, you know, we just put out on our Facebook page and on um, the I uh, I was wondering if we should form. circle huh? back. I, that's what I was wondering if we should circle back to see, because I love walking. I've been enjoying this. The sunshine has been, I went for like oh, a- Oh, today was beautiful. Oh, it was so amazing. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know who, who that was. I don't, that's what I was going to ask if anybody that's happened to- I, uh, block. Um, Elaine is the first name. Oh, Elaine Walsh? Was that her name? Yes. Because I remember Elaine the name. Elaine Parrish? Because she's right here on Franklin Park South. Oh, Elaine Parrish. Oh, I don't know. Okay. So if that's so, I can drop her uh, an email. I just thought that's something she wants to be a part of. I, I mean, I, you know, maybe we, I'm happy to post something, but I don't want to do something Oh, you know, yeah. over step, but she's not interested anymore, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can I can uh, uh, share emails or drop her a note or you know do an e introduction between the two of you and then just see you know you all yeah. can take it from there if it works if it doesn't maybe people want to wait till spring okay. you know there it is Sounds good. okay thank you okay no problem others okay there's some other things that came out but they'll come out a little bit later um, so we can go on to um, the NIAC process the NIAC. Um, Election process. Um, is there anyone? Uh, uh, well, let me just say, let me say briefly that um, the uh, uh, NIAC held elections on uh, December uh, 26, which is a Saturday, uh, by people voting in person at the um, uh, Pride Center. Um, and uh, because of a website that was developed by a group of candidates, the election was contested. Um, there were several meetings. 
um, both open public meetings and meetings with the election committee. And at the end of the day, both the election committee and DEAC decided not to uphold the protest. And it now goes to city council to be resolved. So um, the, uh, uh, the district one and district three um, candidates, um, there's, there's some questions. So the district two and district four were seated. Um, and so um, that process uh, uh, continues, okay? Um, I was hoping that uh, Roy would be on tonight, but he isn't um, to see if there was any update. But um, I, did, I did want to just make sure that people were informed of that process. Is there anybody who wants to add to that or did I speak erroneously? Brian? Uh, yes, actually, actually none, of the, none of the district candidates are seated, including districts two and four. Okay, so they're all seated, right. Okay, so they didn't uphold, they seated the ball, but it's still going for review by city council. So that's where it is. Um, I will alert you though that um, there will be uh, seats up uh, again, uh, including district one, our district, for um, in June. So there'll be another round of elections, you know, cause they do it in groups like we're doing it. So there will be more NEAC campaigning later this year. Any other comments or questions? Kim? Kim, you're still muted. Wait, okay. we're, can you hear me now? Yes. We're, we are District 4, not District 1. Sorry, District 4. Okay. Okay. And I spoke to a, uh, uh, a candidate from 3 tonight, and they are not seated. Mm. So, and okay. I, didn't ch I didn't check on District 1. That's right. correct. None of, none of the seats that were voted on <clears throat> have been seated or... Uh, in the words of the current chair of NEAC, will be seated until the matter is uh, heard that's by what, city council. Right, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else on NEAC? Okay. Then can we go to, um, okay, our FPC organizational structure. And this is Will again. Thank you. Uh, I believe I reported at the last meeting <clears throat> that in uh, back in the 70s, our organization was incorporated under the uh, rules of the state of Ohio, and that corporation's status as a not-for-profit corporation or a non-profit, not not-for-profit, but non-profit organization, that status is still in effect. With regard to the federal government, they had applied to become a 501c4, which is different from a 501c3, and a c4 is not tax exempt, but a c3 is. Because our status as a c4 expired, it was recommended that we move forward to apply to become a 501c3 uh, so that we can get donations to do all the things on that development list that I showed you. Uh, and do things in conjunction with other neighborhood and community groups. And so uh, I've begun that process. Again, I'm looking for people who are uh, willing and able to help with that because uh, it's, it's very uh, extensive process. Um, and in, in my development plan, we talk about the parts of it, but I'll be glad to spend time with folks offline who want to know how they can help to pull together all the information that has to be submitted. Uh, there will be a small budget associated with that. The federal government charges $600 uh, to apply. And I think there may be, uh, at the end of the line, uh, a need for um, uh, insurance for board members to protect their liability in case they put on an event, somebody's unhappy, to that type of thing. I think it's called Directors and Liability Insurance is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, those will be the uh, 
costs that have to be uh, fleshed out and pinned down and they'll be submitted for the budget, which I think uh, will be nailed down in the near future. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is really, really very, and, and, and unfortunately, um, one of the things we have to, we have to nail down is um, whether or not um, we have to establish our financial history. That's really kind of the, the, what's been holding us up so far is yeah. because if we have to, to establish our financial history for the, the three years prior to when I came in, mm -hmm. then it's, it's, it'll be a bit of a problem. Um, but that, that's really it. We hope to have this resolved by next month. Um, right. Because we can, you know, if we could just start as a new organization, first time coming into existence and start with uh, November 2019, then, um, you know, we'll be okay. But if we have to uh, uh, show organizational history prior to November 2019, um, it's going to be a bit of an issue. So I did talk okay. to IRS, and if uh, and they said that we could start fresh. That's what they said. Okay. Uh, however, uh, you know, we may get to page 24 of the instructions and find out, wait a minute, <laughs> we're right. getting a completely different vibe here. So unfortunately, I think the people who answer the phones aren't the ones who evaluate the applications, but we'll find out and, and do what we have to do. Yeah. So we uh -huh. need some really, we, we, we need some detailed people some detail-oriented people who like paperwork and, you know, to really, uh, Research. Uh, I mean, um, really, to walk through this and do it nicely because you really have to have your I's dotted and your T's crossed. Yes. Okay? All right. Uh, Bill, I, I have a question. Uh-huh. Please. Uh, we were thinking about in the garden to become a 501c3 um, about four or five years ago. I've, didn't they streamline that whole piece Based on Excellent question, Richard, and I'm so glad you asked that. They did streamline it. Mm -hmm. However, if you have been put in the penalty box by IRS, okay. you cannot use the streamlining process. Gotcha. Right. And, and come problem. in under the same name. If we were going to yes, form sir. a whole new organization, a new name, new bylaws, whatnot, we could use the streamlined process. Right. But because Franklin Park uh, Civic Association's previous status lapsed, because they didn't file the 990 reports for three consecutive years, right. then we have to do the comprehensive. That's that's the penalty. Okay, basically. follow you. Mm -hmm. Good question. Thank you. That's our issue. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I, More for uh, could Will? I make, I heard could I make a comment? Yes, yes Casey. Uh, my name my name is Casey Crisp. I'm uh, actually an East State resident, and we I wasn't directly involved with the process but we just uh, i think a year and a half or two years ago went through the process of applying for a 501c3 and did not get it mm -hmm. um <clears throat> we ended up getting the 501c4 yep. so if if it would be helpful to you um if you want to reach out to me uh, i can put you in contact with the people that worked on that process and maybe sure. they can offer some insight on into how Absolutely. to avoid whatever we did so, or didn't do. Right. I did have a brief conversation with uh, Tim uh, Anderson oh, yep. and, and he was on his way to work. So I, we didn't get into detail, but uh, you know, any other reference points you can give him would be greatly appreciated. Okay. All right, we're going to keep moving and go to new business, and we're going to stick with Will. I'm telling you, he's been so, with retirement, we're just really benefiting. That, I, I, I should have stayed in the workforce. I'm telling you. So hey, now, I, I want my pay doubled. I want my pay doubled. Yeah, I'm telling you. Um, uh, we had, um, we talked about NEAC election. Now Will's going to talk uh, about okay. our election, FPCA right. election. Let me get that up. Uh, and if, okay, if you don't mind, let me just share my screen here. And uh, can you see the elections committee report? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, at the top, 
in accordance with our bylaws, you see that we have four offices that will, uh, whose terms expire at the end of March. And so also in accordance with our bylaws, we have to reelect those people and begin that process with opening nominations uh, today in our uh, February meeting, two months in advance. And there's some additional steps and requirements here for nominations. Um, but what I'd like to do is put those in your hands so you can look over and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, the one thing I would say is that the, uh, and, and this is on our website also, which I encourage people to, to look at as often as they can. Uh, the position vice president is currently filled by Tamika Johnson, who's going to never be with us this evening. And the second secretary position is some guy, I mean, is our, our good friend Brian Curtis. Uh, and the other trustee position, I think, that is coming up is Kim Bear. Okay, just for general contextual information. But anyone can be nominated, and I will send the information about the requirements for nominee and the process for submitting those nominations. And then, uh, as you can imagine, when we do have the elections in, uh, in April, that they will be virtual. Okay. And uh, we're going to see if there's any things that we haven't considered here. But what we're expecting is that once we receive nominations, <clears throat> by the end of March, we'll send out an electronic ballot. People will submit them from the email address that is attached to their membership. Then we'll kind of validate that those people are, are, uh, are, are voting members. And then we'll report out uh, on the day of the election, which is our April meeting. And I think our bylaws does say that nominations cannot be made from the floor. Okay, so all these nominations need to well, occur in the time frame that's put in. Yes? Any questions? Um, actually, or? the bylaws... Go ahead. Yeah, uh, two, two points. One, that um, we really <coughs> want to encourage, you know, uh, uh, yes, new people to step forward, but the, the bylaws are clear in terms of there should be existing membership for at least a year. Um, and so we really want to, to, you know, people who've, you know, shown some commitment is supposed to walk in the door. And then two, um, they do say that they they do have nominations from the floor because it is the meeting of, and I think we've got to actually do a um, motion next month um, to stop the uh, nominations prior, sometime prior, uh, in order to, um, to establish the virtual uh, election process mm -hmm. because it'll be difficult to do, you know, um, from that night. And then thirdly, um, I would like to have a candidate's night. Mm -hmm. I would like to have a, a, an opportunity for people who are interested to actually say why um, and actually share with us which uh, committees they'll be involved in or what objectives they see, you know, mm -hmm. pursuing um, and actually, uh, um, you know, share with us their vision, as it were. So um, that that candidate night uh, would be sometime, um, you know, say the second week of April, um, mm -hmm. to give people who are interested in all the positions. And it wouldn't be at a meeting; it would be a separate candidates night uh, for people just to share with us the, the community at large their vision. Okay, Kim, do you have your hand up? No. Okay. That was from an earlier. I think. Okay. All right. Other questions or comments on the FPCA election process? And, and we'll, we'll get that out along with the minutes from Brian uh, for the rest of the night. Okay, now Richard and Meredith. Meredith's not on, but Richard is on. Anissa is on uh, for the community gardens. Hello. My name is Richard Harris, and this is my wife, Joyce Harris. We've been long-term residents since 1978. Um, I have been a member of the Growing Hearts and Hands Community Garden, but we started out as a um, care group from New Salem, 
Missionary Baptist Church. And as a care group, we got organized in our church and we did many things. Pastor said one day to us, we got to get up out of here because we all, about, we about 120 care groups in our church. He said, y'all just sitting in church doing nothing. You got to get out in, in the community. So we went out into the community and like uh, the first century uh, Christians, we met in each other's house. And out of that, we did a uh, community service. We um, went to um, the YWCA, for example, and we would uh, serve their, their meals for, for, for the family center. And we did that three or four times. We also went over to um, uh, Children's, Hospital. Children's Hospital there, and then we fed those people who were uh, there to because their children were having surgery. So we did a lot of outreach programs. In uh, 19, uh, 2009, we decided to uh, start a community garden, and the plot we chose was on. Uh, Oak Street between Miller and Kilton Avenue, 1, 1536 uh, Oak Street. Vacant lot, tires, needles, glass, bottles, you name it, it was there. And we had to clean it up. We leased the plots from the city of Columbus. Uh, matter of fact, I'll be doing a, a renewal in March for the two plots that we have. Um, because of health issues, I've been not as involved as I should have been in the last two years, but I'm getting stronger and I'm getting better. This year, we are going to restore our garden back to where it was. Um, still working on many of those details that I hope to share with you in March. But we, in our heyday, we did many things. We not only garden, we had Bible study there. We had a chef that would come on Wednesdays during the summer and teach cooking classes. September, we had uh, ice, ice cream socials. We had art, we had art uh, classes for kids. We did a new number, numerous kinds of different kinds of things. Uh, that we can do. Now, I probably forgot some things and Bill and Linda can testify to what I'm saying. Um, but we're going to restore our garden. We have a new house being, being built next door to us. So, but we're going to work out some stuff and we're going to beautify our sites and continue to do those things for our community. Um, more information will be get given to you in, in March. Okay. Um, looking for Earth Day celebration, but right now the city has not told us all the details as, as, as to what they will be doing. So that will be coming up too. Okay. Uh, Anissa, did you want to um, share something on um, the Franklin Avenue garden? Yeah, sure. Um... So about five years ago, I became an empty nester and there was a vacant lot very similar to um, what Richard was describing about his. It is privately owned though. It wasn't owned by the city. So um, to keep me out of trouble, I thought I'd start a garden there. And, um, <laughs> and also at the time I was having some health issues. I was having some dizziness and um, my doctor actually recommended that I walk on the land every day for 30 minutes. So I thought by having a garden, um, it was a structure and and surprisingly enough, my dizziness did go away. It just cleared up. So, um, so the garden's gone through many changes just like our neighborhood has. Um, it's been five years. Um, we had to do a lot of cleanup in the early years. Um, there were a lot of children and families then, but they have moved. Um, 
we don't have that much of um, sun, so our growing potential is limited. But we, this past year, we had um, three open window concerts by local residents, James London. We've had some drumming circles there. Um, we've got new neighbors. I think Gretchen is on, on the call with us. She's in her um, back kitchen door, backs into the garden, and she's taking a great interest as well. Um, yeah, we've, this year we got a little lending library and a little tiny free pantry. It's a little greenhouse and it's got some canned goods in it so far. Um, I've got um, a kind of a roommate who's staying with me in a school bus and she's a farmer. So she helped out last year with the community garden. Um, so we're looking to take it up a notch and um, I'm, I've heard something about um, the city maybe zoning um, community gardens and residential areas to do a farm stand. I don't know where that stands right now, but that, that would be, what's that? They haven't signed what, off on it. They haven't signed on it, off it yet. Okay, but that would be nice to do something. Yeah, I was very pleased when I was going around dropping off uh, mm -hmm. things after the mingle to see that Gretchen was your neighbor. Because I was like, oh, we got to rope her in on the garden. If she's not already in the garden, we got to bring her into the garden. Okay. <laughs> okay, Kim, how about uh, Linwood? Okay, Linwood was established 28 years ago. Um, we were, uh, everybody was a lot younger then. <laughs> and... Uh, our block hasn't changed that much except that people have gotten older. So we need some young blood to help us get things cleaned up and stuff like that. Uh, there was also some vandalism to our uh, gazebo. And we would like to get that done because we uh, there is a yearning on this block to gather at this garden and, uh, you know, have have community get, you know, bring for everyone to be brought together so um i i think i can i think i can generate some donations of um uh, things that are being some uh vegetable starts and stuff like that but i can't do every uh garden patch by myself i tried i but i can't so um i'm gonna need help with that and with just cleanup and then uh, these are raised box beds so Last year, uh, I brought in a couple truckloads of organic dirt, uh, but I, once we pull every uh, all the once we get everything cleaned up, I'm sure we'll need uh, some more there. But uh, I have seen a lot more interest in some of the young people, so I have three new members uh, and then another ten existing members. But we have almost thirty beds, so looking for more people with love in their heart and strong backs okay all right what i've asked um um uh, uh you know richard and kim and anisa and uh, meredith to do is actually give us a survey we've just heard tonight from three of the gardens i know there's still the one at St stafford in maine and kimball farms next to them on main street and so i'm aware of at least <laughs> five community gardens in our area. And we need to know number one, whether or not the beds are privately owned or whether it really is a, it's a community farm where the land is being taken care of in general, okay? Um, and then if we can um, uh, move in, uh, uh, identify what the basic need is just to get the land clean. All right, you know, if there's refuge on the land, if it needs to be weeded, is there something we can do just to, you know, to bring it, to clean it up and may stabilize it? Um, and then if, uh, uh, if, if, it's, if the beds are not to be worked, then maybe it's about us putting flowers in and maintaining the flowers and then keeping, you know, uh, uh, keeping the, the beds, the rest of the land mowed, okay? But if it's about people actually using the land for food, then what is the process by which people uh, uh, get a bed? So Kim says there are 30 beds on, on Linwood. 
who do you go to to get a bed? Do you have to pay for the bed? Do you have to bring your own plants and soil in? You know, so for each garden, there should be a one pager. If the beds are open to the public, then what is that process by which the beds are made available? And then again, this is information we can put on our websites, put on our Facebook page, you know, pass out in general mailing to everybody, um, use it as talking points for people and get people involved. I got two requests today from organizations looking to take volunteers to work on a community garden. I got two requests today from groups that can be anywhere from 10 to 30 people. Some of them just come with uh, 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 highly energetic uh, uh, young people. Others actually come with um, their own equipment. You know, others will actually bring soil or if you need something repaired, you know, uh, um, you know they'll bring all the tools that are needed to repair it. But you have to be very clear about what is needed, how many, and the time frame. And right now, a lot of the reorganizations and where I'm getting the request, um, they're looking to schedule, schedule things for April. April's the, the jump off time. It's Earth Day and it's, it's people want to do something and people have been locked up all winter and it's time. So, you know, right now my Saturdays are booked from the middle of March through uh, the end of May. My Saturdays right now as we speak are booked because of community gardens, okay? Um, another group uh, uh, um, is uh, wants me to come pick up 150 pounds of potato starts. <laughs> now, do you know how much 150 pounds is? <laughs> you know, 50 pound bags. <laughs> but these are what they call gleanings. When uh, uh, the people machines go to the potato farms after the corporates have come through and taken the potatoes out, these are the potatoes that they you have to pick by hand because they got missed by the machine. And they're now giving them to families and communities. And the one caveat is that the potatoes not be for sale. They do not want me to give them to somebody who's gonna grow them and then sell the potatoes. They want them to go to families only. So, you know, over the next six weeks, I have to figure out how to get rid of 150 pounds of potato starts to families who will eat them <laughs> and not sell them, okay? So I'm saying that, the, the, uh, I just want to impress upon you that this is a very serious aspect of our community and one that can bring a lot of, um, uh, uh, of joy as well as good health, as well as positive community interaction as long as we think about it and plan for it and act accordingly. Okay, any other questions or comments on community gardens? And be sure and let me know if you want some potatoes. <laughs> okay. Open discussion. We had a, um, a uh, comment uh, um, from someone, um, and maybe Brian, let me turn this over to you. The trolley barn and um, the restaurant. Our uh, Megan's still on the call. Okay. I am, yeah. Okay, so Megan, yeah. Yeah, so I just heard, you know, rumblings and rumors that um, being in the, the service industry for as long as, you know, as I was here in Columbus, that it's potential that Corso Ventures um, could be a vendor at the trolley barn. Um, Corso Ventures, for those of you that don't know, they own places like Pint House, Standard Hall, Food Hall, Forno in the short north. They have locations in Dublin, you know, uh, Urban Myers Pint House. Uh, let me cut in, Megan, yeah. um, because uh, that, that still didn't, that didn't connect with some people. Right. But um, some of you may remember last year, there was a, a notice put in a restaurant that people couldn't come in with the, um, the draggy pants and the basically, okay, now you know, so everybody's like, okay, I know what you're talking about. Okay, so all that coded language or right. black people are not welcome here. Exactly. Okay, now, okay, now you can go on. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and, and that, that's precisely my point. Um, you know, something like that, I don't think upholds the values of this neighborhood. I don't think it would be a good fit for this neighborhood. And I think it's, you know, it would be nice to know what connection we have with the trolley barn 
how we can discuss with them who's getting in there and, and what kind of say that we have, like this is not something that represents who we are, or what we want to be bringing here. You know, the last thing we need is somebody that's, you know, been going against COVID restrictions and that, you know, has racist policies and, and work, um, you know, in our neighborhood. Okay. Comments or questions? This is Miriam. <clears throat> I definitely, sorry, I'm eating dinner. I definitely agree with that, um, Megan. I think that, you know, they were egregious when it came to the COVID lockdown things and they had disregard and you know it there's a lot of i think um i just rather have someone else yeah we'd rather have someone else yeah <laughs> gross <laughs> but, okay yeah but so yes i'm in agreement with that so maybe there's some way that we could uh rally a, a petition or but I, I think too we would have to probably make sure that people know who like what the the behavior of this organization is or you know um because I didn't feel like there was a lot of change in his in this person's or this company's behavior, even after they were fined. It was more like, oh, we'll just pay the fine, no big deal. Right. All right. Le Lirian, is there something in writing that we could go to to read about it? I mean. No. Okay. Well, first of all, do we know that they've actually applied to be a tenant? That was my first question. Well, that was kind of what I was bringing. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go and you know, I might be a little to pull the other petition or something but i'd like to know who our contact is now at the trolley barn i know that the guy that came on previously mentioned that they were hiring someone new like a project manager right right, uh, right? And, and that she would be our new contact so it'd be nice to reach out to her and see if there's any information you can provide us about vendors um, and letting her know that there's certain you know there's certain things that we're looking for uh, in this neighborhood and like that we're bringing into this neighborhood it needs to be positive yeah Okay, let me get uh, Kim in. Um, I, I think that we can reach out to Jeff and, uh, you know, voice our concerns. Um, and I, I know that there's a huge list of vendors waiting for an opportunity to get in. So I, I do think that voicing our concerns is, is appropriate and that we should do so immediately before any leases are signed because you can't get out of it that's a contract that doesn't that you can't get out of so yeah that's exactly why i brought it as soon as i found out it's you know before we make moves and people start getting you know something signed it'd be nice to let people know that this is how we feel about that right okay exactly. other comments or questions uh, Mr. Willis, I I, ha I sent an email to Brian and Julia Lynn. I can forward it to you if y'all have links. Yeah. Articles yeah. about the policies and their COVID. Um, okay. We're not hearing, uh, uh, Kim, okay, not hearing any serious um, dissent. Um, I would think that we would proceed by, um, I'll contact Jeff and say, based on our prior discussion, you know, we want to clarify you know, our relationship as a neighbor and our expectations in terms of them coming in. And also we still want to follow up on the employment issues. Yep. And you can't hear me. I can hear you and- Okay, and uh, also follow up on the employment uh, issues. Well, I, I think we really, we really need to. And, and this is almost, I think we might want to actually appoint someone that's in charge of interacting. This is a huge undertaking that's going on that's going to impact us for the rest of our lives. Yeah. So I think that, that we need to fo have someone focusing on this mm -hmm. because it's not a little thing, it's a big thing. It's a very big thing. Yep, I would right. I'm, I'm happy to help. You know, I have a pretty you know busy full-time job, but I'm happy to help coordinate, um, you know, with anything on good. that. Yep. Okay, good. Then definitely we will do that. Well, I'll contact you as well. Okay. All right. Anything else under open discussion? Any random items, issues, concerns? I just have one more question. I, I remember um, two months ago you brought up uh, the mural project. Um, and the I wanted to see if you'd had any progress with that. And that's also something where I would be willing to help out with that. Um, I used to run an art gallery, so I have a pretty um, expensive local artist connection. And so I think, you know, is that still an opportunity? Do we are looking at spaces and- I'm sorry, Mick, which project? 
the mural sorry the mural. yes 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 no no that was um yeah um um that is tucked on uh, paragraph three, line B of the development report. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah. uh -huh. Line three. <laughs> so, yes. So the I, that's where that is, um, and um, and actually, um, I had a brief discussion with Tammy because um, another organization released a, uh, a call for proposals with some grant money. And I thought maybe with, we could get Transit Art and Duarte Brown involved. So yes, that, that discussion is alive, but that is uh, um, a part of the development committee. Okay, so Mick, so you're now part of development. Okay, perfect. I'll reach out to Mr. Willis and um, you know we can kind of coordinate on that. And really, you know, once I, yep, I know we haven't even talked about it. <laughs> but it, it, we, when you get the report, you'll see it really is on there. Um, because uh, uh, there were a couple of ideas around um, the art. And um, yes, so we do want to do that. I've actually, and I've, I've actually um, been kind of a project manager on a couple, couple murals in Columbus already. Yeah. Um, so I kind of know sort of how to manage it. And really, once we get a little bit further along, it's just about hearing from you all what kind of content you would like and what, what you know general kind of aesthetic you like. And once we have those kind of things and we understand what we yeah. want, you know, to, to show, then it's a pretty easy process of kind of curating, narrowing it down to a few artists. So the neighborhood and, and then, you know, but we can we can also do it if it's a grant and application process. It's really not too complicated once we all decide exactly what kind of content we want. It's just the fun okay. part, but also the, you know. I hear well, you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in, in the plan, I'm glad you mentioned that, is it, it talks about it being uh, uh, led by a working group. And, you know, there, this is the kind of thing where you want to have as broad as manageable a group of perspectives so that once the paint dries, people will say, that's what we wanted. Uh, and, I, you know, without getting sidetracked, there have been other projects, as I'm sure you know, art can be a double-edged sword. And, uh, and, and you don't want to put it up there and then people say, oh, let's take it down. Because for a nonprofit group, you know, that, that's not going to be a financial option. So. Yeah. Okay, did I see uh, Joyce? Did you have your um, hand up, I, Joyce I Harris? I just wanted to, want to ask if you have a complete list of the tenants that are going into the trolley barn as yet. Do you have no. any idea how many no. vendors? No, okay. no. They've been very secretive. That's part of what yeah. Megan's talking about, yeah. yeah. So the, the, he talks about his anchor tenants and then the kinds of tenants he wants to put in the rest of the places, but we don't have the actual names. Okay. And speaking of actual names, I don't see the actual email addresses for people for whom this is a first time call. So please huh? put your email addresses in the uh, list. In, uh, in other, the chat. In the chat. In the chat, right. Um, other uh, questions, comments, General? Um, Brian, your hands up. First up, the uh, Columbus Landmarks, they're doing their annual most endangered buildings list. The nominations are open until eight. And if you're not familiar with that process, uh, I won't ask Julie Lynn to give you all the details, because but uh, they have a great website that has a pictorial and, and narrative history about the importance of that that designation and and what the process is like and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, and, and it's a short-term window, so you know it's not like something you have to think about for a whole year and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, you got 13 days, and then. Right. Okay. I think it's linked up Columbus. They're doing a study on public transit on Broad Street and/or Main Street. They're having a virtual meeting this Thursday. On that, on the rapid transit <coughs> study that. Columbus is doing with uh, Morpsy and Kodak as partners. So how does that relate, if I may, Brian, how does that relate to the uh, 
espoused uh, intent of the legislature to withdraw money from municipal bus systems. I was going to bring that up next. Okay. <laughs> so, Coda had a round to a talk last week about that, and they went people to email the chair of the Ohio House Finance Committee mm -hmm. and let their voices be heard. And it's, I can try to put that in the chat before it blows up. It's Real also on, on our Facebook site. Mm -hmm. that's, that's there as well as well as the most endangered building up as good. well. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the, the other one I saw was the um, traffic study for Mount Vernon. I, I took it. It was a very, I thought the, the questions were very strange, but, yeah. um, you know, just, you know, just take it, just make your voice be heard. And they're like, what could make it better? I'm like, put those traffic lights back in at, at, at Champion, yes. Ohio. That's just horrible. It you is. Know? I, I never took you know, but that's another, because, you know, Bryden and Wilson, et cetera, et cetera. So don't get me started. Okay, um, Sylvia, Harry, Chris, um, Patrick, anything? We haven't heard your voices. Sylvia, I like to hear voices. Any questions or comments, observations? Here comes Harry. Yes, Get William. Camera, right? Go ahead, William. No, I thought he, I saw Harry reaching for his camera. I thought he was getting ready to make a. Uh -huh. No, I just. Okay, uh, William. No, I think other, no other comments. I just oh. missed a couple meetings. So, okay. Well, it was good to say that. I, I just want back again. Well, I want to say I'm good. Um, a little bit I'm later good. would be making it a lot easier. The... Hold on, just a second. Uh, hold on, hold on, just a second, please. First, Sylvia, then uh, uh, Casey, and then William. Sylvia. Okay. Hello. I just want to um, say that we are interested in um, helping out in some of the community garden okay. stuff. Um, the church actually has one also on Madison, and I don't know what that other street is on the end there. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Oh, there's a small yeah, one there. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we have one there, and we've got a couple young people that have actually asked to help us with that. But we need help with ours because we have a lot of people that, you know, that's gotten older that can't do it or for some reason that they can't do it. So I think it'd be good if we could all like whatever like help you need that we can help out in the other gardens, maybe come together in some kind of way. So I'm very, we're very interested in doing that. So and, and, and maybe we could do a round robin where each Saturday we just go to a different garden and just spend yes. about two hours in each one to get them, you know, going. Okay, mm -hmm. I said uh, Casey next or William. I was just thanking you for uh, allowing me to attend your meeting. Great meeting. Okay, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Casey. Okay, always look for input. William. <laughs> me? Uh, me? This way? No, okay. William Woods. Yeah, you're me. Will. You're Will. I want okay. William. <laughs> Mr. Woods? <laughs> He's still muted. Fred. Oh. Okay. There you go. Okay. Uh, I'd like to know about the trolley barn. I know this is a lot of soil runoff in that area. What can we do about that? <sighs> uh, let me ask this. We've had a number of questions uh, about the trolley barn, and I think Kim made a good point that we have a, a single point of contact, mm -hmm. and we, we take, and that contact take the scroll of questions that we have about things that we see going on, commitments that they made in the past, mm -hmm. and and uh, keep working with them until we get those questions answered and or resolved. It right. would be my recommendation. So uh, that's a great one, uh, and, and I'll make note of it, but we'll try and make note of all the questions we heard. But if you have other questions, send them to fpcivic at gmail.com. Is that right, Brian? Hello, Brian. Uh, yes, take my word for it. That's the yes, yes. Uh, 
Dr. Yes. Walker might answer most of the questions um, because she should as president. Yeah. But, like either the, any of the officers have access to that. Right. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm going to say thank you very much for um, attending this evening. And uh, please, oh, please, we need you to get involved. We, I thought okay. we had some good discussions, some good uh -huh. ideas. Um, there were a number of things that Tammy said tonight that I thought, wait a minute, we could be plugging you know, into that. There's some people in the community. I don't know that people are taking advantage of some of those programs. So you know, there's always more to do. That's the bottom line to that, okay? So yeah. thank you very much for attending tonight. Um, I'll see you definitely next month, but in between, I want to see you at least virtually as well. Yeah, he said okay. you're going to ask the uh, next two speakers. Tonight. Yes, next week, uh, next month is uh, Frederick Bertley from COSI, and then um, oh. Matthew Goldstein from BESA, the um, corporate support group. So um, uh, COSI is March, and BESA is April. And I'm looking at the Museum of Art for May, and then we'll find somebody else for June. And again, I welcome your suggestions. If you, you know, if there are people or institutions that you want to know more about, again, FPC Civic. We've been watching uh, uh, the Dr. B's COSI show on PBS. And it's been yes. really fun. So oh, I just thought yes. I'd, I'd, I'd give a plug. <laughs> he's hysterical, really. And he's a neighbor. Great. You know, I know that's I the know thing. That. all our neighbors. So we, the, we have a fantastic wealth in the community. Okay. All okay. right. So take care. Everybody stay safe and socially distance, mask, everything. Okay. Everybody got their shots? Getting their shots? Yes. Okay. Not yet. But, yeah, I've got one. My mother said two. We're getting there. All right. Take care. Uh, right, to, to the All website right. and the okay. Facebook page. All right. Um, yes, All I'm right. coming. Peace out. Said, uh, hey, Brian, hold tight for a second. Okay, Patrick. Yes. So why why did what time did you want us to start? Eight or nine o'clock? <laughs> ah, you you've muted. Seven, Go ahead. Seven ish. I mean, I, I just I re retired last year, but before that, there was no way I could ever get back here by six thirty. I mean, I'd get off work at seven. Uh, I, I know that's why I retired. <laughs> Because yeah, but home. even even so, six thirty is just you know too busy, and usually seven is is you know I basically have to adjust all my schedule to get anything before seven. So, so you know, I, I bring it up, and and uh, I mean, I know you know it hasn't really been a brought up before, uh, but but I understand your point. You, the the thing. One thing to keep in mind is the meetings run usually 90 minutes, as you can see. So the yeah. later you start, the later you end. And unfortunately, the later you get in the evening, the more drop off you have. Yeah, well, I'll try to make more of them, but that's always well, going to be a problem. So, well, let me just say this. Uh, you see how the meeting, it, you know, uh, we have kind of the mundane stuff at the beginning, committee reports. Yeah. So we're, we're Julia Lynn's on our back to get these reports out to folks sooner so they can be familiar with it. And you won't have missed anything. I won't make any analogies to church or anything, but I'm just okay. saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so that the meat of the meeting really kicks in around seven or what have you. The other thing I would say is we're experimenting and hopefully this won't need to be for the rest of our existence with recording our meetings. And then we'll be able to store them on our website. So if there's something you want to kind of go back and see, that's what the recording is for. In addition okay. to minutes, you know, uh, people like, uh, what's his name? I think he has a class. Nick has a class now on Tuesdays. 
So mm -hmm. that that will be the the other alternative. So. Uh, I mean, it was no it was no big thing. I uh, you know I. I'll well, try to make more. Of on your face like you were going. Thunk somebody. <laughs> no, that's just. I know, I know, I know. It's never, it's kind of like having children. There's never really a, a, a best time, you know. Yeah. Because uh, I haven't had dinner, and I'm, I'm hungry as heck, you know. That too. <laughs> from, <laughs> from, from running around and whatnot. But, uh, but I think by, by this combination of things, by getting our committee reports out earlier, uh, earlier relative to the meeting, by having a recorded version, and, and you know, aiming for hitting the important parts by closer to seven, we, we can stick to that 90 minute time frame without it starting too early and not ending too late. Okay. Okay. Brian, you have any thoughts? Um, we'll see what everybody else thinks. But... I know. Yeah, that's what I told them. I mean, some people unfortunately go from our meeting to another meeting. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, uh, but but we'll see. And, uh, you know, as we get more into this committee frameworks, some of the more uh, really important discussions will be at a committee meeting, like a development committee or an activity committee. Like we had a bunch of committee meetings last uh, fall on, on the mingle, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you'll get to know people a little better that way, I think, as well, you know, where you're working, actually working on the common tasks, that type of thing. So it's, it's, it's a balancing that, but we appreciate you uh, speaking up and raising that point, so. Well, I, she asked, so. Yeah, no, what? Don't ask, don't get. But, uh, yeah, don't drop out on us. Don't, don't abandon us. Don't okay, get to no, I'll, I'll still try to make them, but like I say, uh, I'm, I may be coming in at seven then, yeah. Oh, I understand. So, hey, tell me this. Now that now that you've got my ear, I'm going to get your ear. So, okay. what, part, what part of the neighborhood do you stay in? Um, I'm Franklin Park West. Uh, we're, I'm three houses down from Dr. B. Oh, okay. And I think Carol, my next-door yep. neighbor, was, was on earlier, and she yeah, dropped yeah, out. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and that's exactly the point, you know, Carol was talking about, uh, you know, a lot of people in our uh in our age group don't use internet and all that kind of stuff so we're talking about a way to reach those folks and i my guess yeah. is people talking to their neighbors i mean i don't know how long you've been there i've been here 45 years and um, eight um, eight years now well but still you know yeah so o over that period of time you get to know people and i'm hoping that will be a really valuable way that we can share information and alerts is uh, by talking to neighbors, as opposed to necessarily running around dropping off flyers or just mm -hmm. relying on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. What do you think? That makes sense. You know, I'm, okay. I, I worked for the university for 30 years, so I've been, you know, on computers most of my adult life. Yeah. So, um, Either you have or you haven't. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, it always changes. So, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But what but, can I say? Yeah. So, you know, we, we definitely want to uh, engage. Not, I mean, you make an interesting point in terms of what you do vocationally, in terms of thinking about how to how to reach people and stuff. So, uh, but I've been running more and more people say, "Hey, I don't, I'm not on Facebook." I'm like, "Oh, really? Okay." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, mm. Not on Twitter. Just yeah. that. That's too small. That's too short. I did can't yeah. do that. <laughs> Well, thanks for hanging around and, and okay. And, oh, and um, yeah. I'm a past president of the Ancient Order of Hibernians, and we are we also went through, is going through that 50C4 and three. Oh, yeah. I was never the the hands-on person, but oh, okay. I am somewhat familiar, and I know people that did do the hands-on. So, if you know, sure, something that might be of some assistance. Okay, I, I will. Put your name down as a, as a reference, you know, because uh, you know a lot of times you just need a sign, signing board. You know, you pound something out yeah. on the computer and and you, and you think you can get.
to there from here, and then you ask them, they say, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's, and it's changing because, you know, seven years ago, the IRS never even bothered to, you know, track this stuff down. Uh -huh. And then they started enforcing it, so. Yeah, that's true, yeah. and that's still can, uh, a moving target, obviously, with new stuff, yeah. new direction, all that kind of thing. Yeah, so. and it'll change again now. The new yeah, president coming I mean. in? Yeah, yeah. But exactly. No, if the new president come in, the IRS, they're going to yeah. change again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Uh, okay, well, I'll let yeah. you get back to. Okay, yeah, let me have some dinner. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. You. Good talking to you. Yeah. Uh-huh, bye-bye. Okay, so, Brian, I don't know what happened at the, well, number one, I asked Julie Lynn, did she specifically ask somebody to start the meeting, which I was uh, a little annoyed that she didn't make that direct ask, because, you know, I'm thinking you're going to do it, you're thinking I'm going to do it, <laughs> and Nick wasn't available, you see what I'm saying? So, A, I would say, uh, that's something we ought to pin down before the meeting. Now, you, you know the password to get on the site? No, uh, I don't have access to the FP Civics Zoom account. Well, I'll give it to you. It's very straightforward. I mean, it's you just go in and you put in the email address, and it's FPCA four three two zero five, and and you know how to use Zoom, I presume. Yes, that's okay. the password to their Zoom. One more time. Yes, that's exactly. Password. Yes. Okay, so what time did the meeting start? Do you remember? Well, so here, here's, here's, now, here's where I got a bone to pick with you. When I looked at the messages that you put out there, I did not see anywhere what the starting time meeting was. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, it was because that email that we sent out last week, that I copied, and, that I copied and pasted that Nick sent out to all the members. Oh, uh, okay. A huge graphic of all the meeting dates. Yeah, uh, well, that's true. So, you, Nick, and I, let's get together and kind of uh, make sure, because we, we got that graphic. I mean, I like, did you do the one with the picture of Central Community House? Yes. That was excellent, man. That was great. And and some people, you know, some people are kind of used to a familiar site, like the map, you know, that's on our website. Some people really got, I think, uh pulled in. I, I think that's a great idea having a, a variety of ways to message the meeting. You know, one based on the guest speaker, one based on the agenda, you know, one based on, hey, you're a member, this is what we want our members to do, blah, blah. But, uh, so, but that's part of it, but, but on starting the meeting, at some point, well, uh, so, you know, we're getting bigger, and what I'm going to propose to Julia Lynn is that we have kind of an executive committee meeting, which it would be the officers and, and the and the uh, trustees. What do you think? Just to do like tie down what, stuff, huh? I like what Otina does. Well, I mean, every other organization in the world does. But before, the only members were the <laughs> officers and the board members. You see what I'm saying? No need to have an executive meeting when it's the same population. But now that we have more, more active members, uh, some some there ought to be some meet form of an executive committee meeting where we just kind of go down a, a, a tick list so we kind of know who's doing what and what 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 we are expecting to happen and what has maybe not happened from the last time. Would would be my recommendation, just like I was talking to. Uh, this guy, Patrick, about the meeting start time. I mean, I don't know if you want to necessarily bring that up in the general meeting, but the executive committee meeting would probably be a good place to start with that. And then that's not a bad idea. Yeah, and then we can move the meeting time whatever we want. I mean, people, I, I think, would like to get a half hour back, uh, but as long as we start on time and move efficiently through our meetings, I think people will be happy. Uh, but yeah, so you have the, the access to the thing, and all the meetings are already set up on there. <clears throat> all you have to do is hit start. 
but I don't know what the heck was happening if it I was nervous and fat fingering it because I was looking directly at my phone where it had the address and I was kind of typing it in uh, and maybe I shouldn't have done it from my app you know because I, I, maybe you are aware, maybe you're not, that there's kind of two aspects to Zoom. One is the app, and the, and the other is the website platform. And you can sign on on either one, but you can do set up more of your controls on the website that you can't set up on your app. You know, the waiting room, the message people get in the waiting room, whether they have to be in what all that kind of stuff you set up on the Internet. But, uh, now the one thing I would mention that surprised me, somebody set these meetings up to record, which is great, uh, but it says, turn off, well it says something about original sound, and hopefully there's an audio track, that's my point, <laughs> hopefully there's an audio track on this, and, uh, but I'm, I'm not familiar with that command, turn on and off original sound. Maybe it's referring to my microphone. I don't know. But, but we live and learn. Anything else going on? Um, no. Hey, I, but again, I want to compliment you. Great job on the posting on the Facebook. I mean, some really good information. You know, nice visual graphics, all that kind of stuff. And part of what I'm doing is, you know, I dabble on next door and I try not to get caught up in these freaking conversations. <laughs> but, you know, when somebody like one lady said something about why don't we do a mural and she lived in Franklin Park. I said, well, you ought to come to our meeting and, and you know, talk about it. That's what we're trying to do. So I'm trying to recruit people off of next door based on the conversations. You know, if they're kind of talking about stuff that's, kind of on our radar, I'm going to say, hey, come to her. That's what I did with Richard. You know, he was talking about doing a garden, a 501c3 and all that on his own. I said, hey, just join the association and we do it under one umbrella. You know, we don't need 15 501c3s in one neighborhood. I mean, that's too much maintenance. Okay, dokie. All right, man. Well, thanks so much. And I'll talk to you next time. All right.